Everybody knows the first Zombies map is Noct Darantoten. A good number of people know that Noct barely made it into World at War, but what very few people know is the whole story to how Noct made its way into Call of Duty. Thankfully for us, that story is online, and this is courtesy of a blog written by Jesse Snyder, the creator of Call of Duty Zombies, all the way back in November of 2008. The article is titled Nazis, Zombies, Ray Guns, and Magic Chess, and it details the entire development process of Nocter and Toten. Fun fact, this article was actually published the day World at War and Nocter and Toten were released to the world, but because Nocter and Toten was this hidden thing people discovered after completing the campaign, you know, there was this article about Nazi zombies, and people had no idea it was even in the game. And one of the most interesting things you'll learn in this article was that Call of Duty Zombies was actually inspired and based on a Flash game. You remember Flash games, right? They were the genre of internet games that were popular in the 2000s. Websites like AddictingGames.com and Miniclips were arcades with endless titles. When I was a kid, I'd play these games on these sites for hours. And one of the games you'll find on ArmorGames.com was called The Last Stand. It's a simple tower defense game where every night you need to survive a new wave of zombies, all while buying weapons, rebuilding barriers, using points. Sound familiar? The Last Stand was the original inspiration for Call of Duty Zombies. During the development of World at War, there were discussions of adding an additional game mode as just a simple bonus minigame. And one of the ideas tossed around was to incorporate a tower defense game into Zombies. As Jesse explains in his blog, I was talking to one of our designers, Sean Slayback, about a tower defense game and the proposal of how to make one. He mentioned a game called The Last Stand, which is a flash game where you play as a survivor fighting off zombies. Zombies run towards you and start tearing at a large barricade that is protecting your area. As they break through, you're pretty much toast. So you move around in your little section of the screen, shooting various guns trying to keep them from breaking away. The rules are pretty simple and standard for a tower defense game, but with some cool twists. After every round you get points which you can spend on building your barricades and looking for survivors and looking for some weapons. Depending on how you play, you might choose to get new weapons or more people to help you defend, or just simply building up your defenses. So I played a few rounds and I had a huge epiphany. Zombie Nazis, I thought to myself. You can do a lot with the same stuff here, but make it more interactive and more intense in the first person. What you could actually, what if you could actually buy barricades in real time? What if you could actually find and buy weapons in the level? What if you could unlock new areas that change the strategy of the game and flow of the enemies? Plus, you could play in co-op. We have zombie-like animations already, the day zombie guys. This is a no-brainer prototype. The engine supported all of these ideas, and I could see how they could be implemented. From there, the idea was set in motion. There would be some initial hesitation to go forward with Jesse's idea, and it would take some persistence from him to really get this game off the ground, but Jesse's inspiration from The Last Stand eventually became Knocked Air on Toten. While we typically don't think of zombies as a tower defense game, especially when you consider how it's evolved, when you just look at Knock Darren Toten, the inspiration is evident. The bunker, or the map itself, is the tower to which you defend. You earn points by completing rounds, and those points are spent on new weapons and more areas, which you can then use to adapt your strategy, all while rebuilding the barriers to keep the zombies out, which is your tower. Enough talking about this game, though. Let's actually see how The Last Stand plays. So here we are now with the game that started it all, The Last Stand. And let's dive into this and see how it plays. So you start off and you have this diary, and the diary kind of tells the story of what went on in the previous night or the previous day, shall I say. And you'll notice we're at day one right now, we're going to continue all the way to day 20. Unlike zombies, this doesn't run forever, this just runs for 20 days. But honestly, that's enough because I, sometimes I can barely get past day one or two. The controls are pretty simple, WASD to move around, R to reload, space to switch weapons click to shoot and kill i've played this game before actually a few times because i'm pretty bad at it i played it a few times just to see how it goes and then like write about it so i could make the intro to this video and i realized i was super bad at the game so what i did is i watched markiplier play and markiplier had a version on youtube where he was able to beat it all and i kind of learned a few tips and tricks so first off when you're aiming you apparently want to aim behind the zombies because that is the easiest way to do it. I guess the way the gun works in this game is that it's shaped like a cone, or at least like the way the bullets fly. So if you can imagine a cone starts narrow on the on the front 
and expands as it goes on, and the bullet can appear in a random line along that cone. So, the further your cursor is from the zombie's head, the smaller the cone is when it reaches a zombie's head, and the more likely it kills a zombie, or something like that. So if you can imagine, like, your radius at which the bullet can fly. That, though, is round one. Um, a lot harder than it seems, believe it or not. So you have, at the end of the round, you have 12 points, um, hours remaining. These are your points, and you can use those points to find weapons or really purchase weapons. That's how it ends up working. Rebuild barricades or look for survivors, and those will help you out by also shooting the zombies. So apparently what I learned from watching Markiplier is that the weapon search is linear. So it actually pays early on in this game to throw in just a bunch of points towards your weapons, and we'll get the, 30, the 357 revolver. These are your weapon arsenal right here, and as you continue to search for weapons, you will get more of these stuff. So you get like a chainsaw, hunting rifle, which is apparently a beast, shotguns, which are pretty good. Uh, UMP is okay early on, the Uzi and the assault rifle, from what I understand, aren't very good as the game goes on. Oh, fuck, I forgot to select the revolver. Hopefully this doesn't come to bite me in the butt. Uh, here's also one thing I've just learned from playing. Uh, it's easiest to shoot the zombie in front. I don't know why or how that works, but like if you're trying to shoot zombies in the back of the pack, it doesn't work very well. Um, so you kind of just want to be quick, go for the zombies in front. Fuck, they're, we're already having trouble. We're already having a lot of trouble. We are so dead. I don't see us surviving this round, I'll be honest. We are gonna die! Ah, fuck! So, so they break in, and then you have a few kind of seconds if you can riddle off some shots and kill them, but there were too many. And, yeah, this is pretty much what's happened every time I play this. I generally die at round two. One time I was lucky enough to make it to round one. Thankfully, they have a retry button, and the retry button doesn't take you all the way back to the beginning like normal zombies. It just takes you back to this screen. And now let's be a little smarter. We'll pick up the... 357 revolver as our backup weapon and honestly we'll start with this bad boy to begin with because it's not bad we can get like some decent headshots with this um i've seen it have like a one shot kill headshot potential um i'm not good enough at this game to get that a lot i think it also helps to be in line with the zombies but i'm not sure like I said, I ah uh, fuck, I gotta stop reloading prematurely. Like I, I I find myself reloading after every shot, and I don't think that's a good idea. Fuck, we're so bad at this. Oh my god. Ah fuck. If we can just beat round two, I will be so happy. Let's give this another go. Come on. See, that was a one shot right there. Why can't we get more of these? Fuck, like some of these shots aren't even landing. Or maybe they are, and I just don't see it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not good at this game. Like we're we're, we're getting through it. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll survive this time. Oh, come on. We're so close. We can do this. We can do this. Just two more. Two more. Just kill this guy. Yes! We have no health on the barricades, though, so we're kind of fucked. Um, like, we should be putting all of our... From what I understand, the weapon fido meter moves linearly. So the more hours you put into it, the more likely you'll find a weapon. So even though it seems like searching for weapons and it seems random, I guess it's not... Um, we want survivors, but it's a little early to get them. Um, but, like, we have no barricade, so I feel like I should invest some into it. So if it's 5% per hour, we'll get we'll be at the 20%. If we don't, we'll be at... Let's just not. Let's just say fuck it and go for a weapon again. Oh, wait, no, no, because now we're going to have no barricade. Okay, I'm so dead. I mean, we have a UMP-45. Let's see how this UMP works out. So we'll... Let's see. We'll remove that and make the UMP our main weapon. Maybe this will be so good we won't even need barricades. And then next round. Okay, shit. 
I didn't think about this because so the sprinters. So we have no barricades. So once somebody gets in, we're fucked. And they're already coming in. Yeah, we are dead. Wait, we might be able to do this. Just maybe. Just maybe. Yes! Oh, God, we don't deserve that. We do not deserve that. We are not worthy. Okay, we definitely need to rebuild some barricades. So at 5% per hour uh, times 6, that's going to put us at 30%, I think. Yeah, that math works out, I think, in my head. Um, so this will give us a little bit of buffer. And then we'll, uh, what do we get? No weapons, okay. Yeah, I didn't expect any weapons out of that. Um, come on. Let's do this. Oh yeah, we get hellhounds too. Now, I don't think these were... I doubt that these guys actually inspired Hellhounds because we didn't see Hellhounds till much later in Shino Numa. But, you know, we got Hellhounds. Okay, we're getting somewhere. No, we're actually getting burnt right now. We're going to die. Ah. Honestly, this is my best. I haven't gotten this far before. So, like, even though we're only at round four, I'm kind of happy. Um... We're getting somewhere. We'll retry again. Hopefully, we can get through this round. So, we're just going to have to find a way to beat this round with 30%. But, like, you know, we can do it. I think it definitely would help. Go for the fastest, who's ever closest. But then, once they're, once they're doing damage on the barricades, I guess it doesn't matter. I just hope we get a lot of headshots. I don't know. So long as we have no sprinters, we might be able to do this. Unfortunately, we can't train. That was, uh... Oh my god, yes! <laughs> oh, I did not expect that to happen. Oh my god, um... So here's here's the dilemma. Here's a dilemma. If we repair the barricades more, then we're 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 like So it's like we need a better weapon. Like a shotgun would be huge right now. Cause then we can kill multiple zombies at once, especially when they're starting to break through the barricades. But we kinda need barricades. Gimme give gimme give magic. Oh, we're dead. We're fucked. Like, if we get a lot of sprinters and they're taking damage to the barricades, we're screwed. Oh, God. So, you can kind of do a little bit of training. Ugh, but not quite. A bit of charm to it, and also I think it's interesting that every zombie's clothes is different. It's better. Better. Not quite. I think the bigger zombies, like the fat ones, they're, they have more health. Which at least sure seems like it. The... And... We're burnt. We're burnt. You can kind of do a little bit of training, which is fun. Yeah, we're done. No chance. This is it right now. Last attempt. This one is for all the marbles. Well, if this one's for all the marbles, we're off to a terrible start. Thank God that guy, like, accidentally killed that guy. This is how weird the shooting is. I didn't even mean to kill that guy, but he died. Okay, I know this round is starting off bad, but I feel like we're actually accidentally doing well. That said, I don't see us winning. Let's get rid of the big guys. Maybe the... Ah, there's just too many. Like, even when I feel like... Like, I felt like I was doing well that round, but there's just way too many. Ah... Oh. That was our best one. Five left. Ah, you hate to see that at this level of play. Well, I'm not good at this game. 
I'll admit that. If you want to go see somebody play this game and play it really well, go watch Markiplier do it. But that's generally how the game works. You use your points every round to rebuild barricades, find survivors, or find weapons. And you survive the onslaught of zombies while defending your bunker. And while the bunker in this game is just a pile of barrels and some barbed wire and whatever he can find in zombies, our bunker was knocked down and toting. And this game was the original inspiration of zombies, believe it or not. Sorry I'm so trash at it. That's going to wrap things up for this video, though. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, maybe subscribe for more. I'm always doing zombies content, so if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one. Have a great day, and bye.